such good glassware out at Dollar Tree. I found this glass vase and loved the texture on it. And I found a clear plate with the same texture on it. I felt like I could definitely combine the two of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some E6000 along the top of the vase, and then I'll place the plate on top. Now when you use E6000, you wanna let it dry overnight. That's exactly what I did. For this candle holder, I wanted it to have a see-through black color, and I wasn't sure exactly how to achieve that. So when I was at Walmart, I found a product in the car section called Rust-Oleum Lens Tint. I thought this actually might work, so I used that and sprayed one light coat on the entire piece and I have to tell you this works so good to give that see-through look that we see in so many of the high-end pieces. I wanted to add a fun candle to the top of my candle holder. And one of the things I've been noticing in the high-end stores are these square candles. They're really pricey, but I thought, you know what? We could definitely make this. So one of the supplies you're going to need is what we're going to put our candle in. And that's a Tropicana juice container. The reason I like this is after you're done making your candle, it's really easy to tear off because it's paper. So get one of those. You're gonna clean it out and then cut off the top of the lid. Now for my candle, candle wick and my candle melt. I bought those off of Amazon. I will link them for you down in the description box. And the other thing you're going to need is a pot to burn your candle melt in. Now I have this pot that I use all the time, but you want to use an old pot that you could just use for your candles. Now I wasn't sure exactly how many bags of the candle melt I was going to need. I ended up using two for this project. So I took an entire bag and put it into my pot. I used a craft stick to stir it until it was completely completely melted. Once it was melted, I poured it into my juice container. And then I did the exact same thing with a second bag. I heated that up and made sure it was completely melted and then poured it into my juice container. Now this is where I'm going to put my candle wick in. So I want my candle wick to be in the middle. So I'm gonna put it down into the middle. Now you need something to kind of hold it in place while it's going to dry. So what I did was I got a craft stick to put on the top and then I just wrapped some painter's tape around to hold it in place until it was completely dry. I think it maybe took a couple hours to dry, but I went ahead and let it dry overnight just since it was such a large candle before I removed the outer paper. I removed the craft stick from the top, then I cut out the paper along the edge, and this candle looks so high-end, and I love the way it looks on my black candle holder. Dollar Tree is known for having a lot of little figurines, but in higher end stores, a lot of times you'll see figurines, but they're all one color or they're all a certain stone finish. So when I saw this mushroom, I definitely wanted to pick it up. I thought, what if I make this a solid color to make it look a little bit more high end? So when I was shopping for spray paints, I came across this cement spray paint. I thought this is perfect for my mushroom figurine. So I'm going to spray two coats on both sides with this cement spray paint, and it gives just a really matte gray appearance. And I I love the way it looks styled in my decor. If you walk down the Crafter Square section, you're probably gonna see all of these fun new rings that they have. These I'd never seen before. They also have this two pack of bamboo rings. And if you're wondering, you know, what could I do with these? I have an idea to make a wall art piece. So I'm gonna be using three of the larger ones and two packs of the smaller bamboo rings. And I wanna create a sculptural wall piece. So I'll start with the larger rings, kind of moving them around and positioning them till I'm happy with them. I'm not gluing anything down yet. I'll add on the smaller rings as well. So one of my tips to do whenever you're creating a wall art piece is to take a picture of it on your phone and then step back and look at that picture. I do this every time I'm putting together wall art because it just gives you a better perspective. It's a smaller snapshot of what you're creating. And there I can see, okay, do I like the way this looks? Do I want to change something, move it around? So that's a great tip whenever you're creating a wall art. Once you're happy with the way it looks, then you're going to glue it down with hot glue. Now to make it look completely cohesive, I sprayed it with two coats of black Rust-Oleum. I started on the back. Once that was dry, I turned it over and sprayed the front. You can hang this on a nail on your wall and 
I love the way it turned out. I feel like it's a really modern piece and a great use for those bamboo circles. Okay, so stick with me for this next DIY because it's very different, but in the end, this is going to create such a cool accessory for your living room. So you're gonna need three Dollar Tree boards. The first board, I'm going to find the center and I'm gonna cut it in half with just my hacksaw. You could use any saw, but this is the one I had in my craft room. So I wanna make some concrete cones to go in the top of my board. So to do that, I need to create some holes. So I marked three places where I wanted to drill holes on the top of my board just with a pin. Now, if you were on a workbench, you would just use some clamps to hold this down as you were going to drill in it, but I didn't have anything to clamp it to, so I added some screws along the side of my board so it would hold in place as I was drilling. Then I used one of my one inch large drill bits to drill holes where I marked each of those three circles. I'm gonna go back to the board that doesn't have any holes on it. I'm gonna put E6000 along the edge. Then with that board I cut in half, I'm going to put those boards on the side. I'll add E6000 to the top of the side boards and then put the top piece on. I'm gonna put the boards upside down and I'll use some tiny screws on the bottom to just secure it in place. Next, we're going to make the cups that are going to go inside those holes that we just drilled. So I found the best thing to use for this are snow cone paper cups. Now, if you can get paper, that works so much better because you can peel them off later. So trust me, go with the paper. I'll link to the ones I bought down in the description box. I'm also going to be using some quick crete. So I'll take the quick crete and I'll put it into a disposable container and mix it with some water. I like to mix my quick crete until it's about a pudding consistency. Next, I'm going to fill the containers almost all the way up. I left about a centimeter up top and I'm gonna fill each of the containers. I wanna make them as level as possible. So I kind of bent down and made sure that they were all about the same level. Let this sit completely overnight. Then you can come back in the next day when it has a chance to harden and you're going to just peel off the paper snow cone liner. You'll take your three concrete cones and put them back into the wood piece that you created. And then you're gonna need three succulents from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna cut off the stems of the three succulents that I'm using. And then I'm gonna use a combination of E6000 and hot glue to hold those on the top of my cones. To make the succulents look a little bit more realistic, I like to add in some moss. So I'm going to use a little bit of moss and just put that along the edges of my succulent where I already have glue. Let that dry completely, and here's a look at how it turned out. Dollar Tree has a plus section at some of their stores where they sell items for three and five dollars. And every time I go shopping at Dollar Tree, I always check it out and see what new items they have. One of the times I went, I found this scallop tray. I thought it was so cool. It was priced at five dollars and it was in the crafter's square section. So to DIY this tray, I'm gonna be using a medium stain on it. I'm gonna paint the stain on with a foam brush and then I'll use a paper towel to immediately wipe off any excess. I'm gonna let that stain dry overnight. It's really important to do that when you're going to add additional paint, just to make sure that your paint is able to stick. Now I wanted to add a fun paint technique to really bring out that scallop border. I'm gonna add frog tape to the inside of my tray on the base, and I'll do that all the way around. Next, I wanted to paint a rectangle, so I cut the tape off so that it was nice and straight, and I added a straight row. Then I came through and did the exact same thing on the other side, and then I'm going to cut off another piece of tape and add it to make another straight line. Once I get to the edge, I'll just roll the tape over and place it down, and I'll repeat that step on the other side. I'll do a long piece, and then I'll roll it over and place the tape down. Now my piece is completely ready for paint. Using a foam brush and some black paint, I'm going to paint the top edge of the scallop, trying not to get it on the sides where I stained. 
After I do that, I'll use my foam brush and the black paint to paint inside that rectangle line that I have on the base of the tray. Now, when you're done painting, you can immediately pull up the painter's tape. That's what I prefer to do. So I'll just take the painter's tape up. If you have any mistakes, you can sand them off or you could just put decor on top of it. And here's how the tray turned out. This is one of the easiest things you can do with Dollar Tree items. So go to your local Dollar Tree and you want to just search for those bathroom essentials you're going to need, like a soap container, a toothbrush holder, maybe a soap dish, and I also picked up a trash can. Now I will say the soap container I got was in the $3 Dollar Tree Plus section, but everything else was the $1.25. I went on Pottery Barn's website and I saw two pictures I really liked, these cream colored bathroom items, but I also really liked the gold accents in this one. I'm gonna try to put the two of these together. So I started by just removing the lid to my soap container and then I taped off the top. I have a color called Sand Dollar. This is a spray paint that I got by Rust-Oleum and I'm gonna spray paint two coats on the bottom of my items. And then I'll flip them over and do two coats on the other side. Now with the trash can, you may need to do three coats. I also added in a texture spray in the same color. It's not gonna give me a lot of color, but it's going to bring in that Pottery Barn texture that we all love. I also added a matte sealer since these are bathroom items. To finish off the edges and give it that gold look that I liked in our inspiration pictures, I'm gonna be using Rub and & Buff and I'm gonna add that around the top edges. Now, as I was doing this, I felt like I was adding a little bit too much gold, so I needed to mute it down a little bit. So I found one of my cream sample paints. I added that on top of the rub and buff that I already put down. I felt like it just muted that rub and buff just to the right amount. Now it's time for a wood element. Now Dollar Tree has really gotten better about adding wood items to their crafter square, but I'm gonna be using an item that's been around for a while. It's this bamboo cutting board over in the kitchen section. Now this is smaller. In the Dollar Tree Plus section, I believe they have these a little bit bigger if you're wanting something bigger, but I'm gonna be using the cutting board and I'm also going to be using this wreath. I actually used this in a DIY a few months ago, but I'm gonna be using the rest of it and I just need the beads for it. This this wreath comes in three different colors. There's a natural one, a medium tone, and I think a black. I'm gonna be using the medium tone beads. So I pulled off 11 beads. I'm gonna start on one side and I'm just going to hot glue where the circle opening is down to the back side of my board. And I'm gonna alternate on every side until I make a row with my hot glued beads. And then I'll do the exact same thing on the other side with 11 more beads. Now this makes a great tray and it was so easy to put together. Here's how my bathroom set turned out. You guys are gonna have to let me know if you're tired of seeing paint pours, but I have a really cool technique that I just cannot wait to show you. The first thing you're gonna need are some paint pour paints. Dollar Tree has these in their Dollar Tree Plus section. They're $3 and they come in a variety of colors. You're also going to need a glass, a kitchen strainer, and some sort of canvas. So I'm gonna start by picking out the colors I wanna use and filling them up in my glass. Now, I do recommend whenever you're putting in your paint pour paints to add quite a bit of white. I feel like white is a very crucial color to help bring out all of your other colors in your picture. Okay, so in this next part is definitely a fun part, but kind of a little scary too. So you're gonna take your strainer and put it on top of your cup. Then you're going to put your canvas on top of the strainer. And then this is the tricky part. You have to hold it all in place and flip it over. 
Then you're going to take your cup and kind of move it around your strainer, and then you're going to pick your cup up. The next part is you're actually going to pick the strainer up. What that will do is create this really cool texture on your canvas. Now to hold on to that texture when you're moving the paint around your canvas, you want to move it very slowly. And I kind of forgot to put on gloves, so at this point I had to put on gloves. You're gonna move it really slowly so you get all the paint covering the edges of your canvas. But do it at a slow pace so you don't completely lose that texture you created from doing the strainer. And I have to say, I absolutely love the way this turned out. Love the Dollar Tree paint pour paint. So Dollar Tree, give us some more colors because this painting turned out amazing. If you zoom in, you're gonna see a really pretty eucalyptus vase. And when I saw that, I knew that I could recreate that with Dollar Tree items. Dollar Tree sells one of these slender vases, so I picked that up. I also had to get some eucalyptus. Now they do sell eucalyptus stems at Dollar Tree, but in my opinion, they're just not the best quality. So I prefer to get them at Walmart. These I actually picked up at Hobby Lobby. I'm gonna spray the vase with two coats of sand dollar. Next, I'm gonna do a sponge technique on the vase. So I need a sponge from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut that down into small pieces. You can get this over in the bathroom section. I'm gonna use a variety of paints in browns, golds, and creams. So what I like to do when I sponge paint is I start with my darker color. So you're gonna see I'm adding a lot of browns and my golds here. And then I'm gonna come in with my color that's really close to my background, which is a cream. When you add the cream color on top of those darker colors, it's just gonna help it look more blended in. Once my base had a chance to dry, I added in these eucalyptus stems from Hobby Lobby, and here's how it looks. Now, if you have books that you keep in your bedroom, you may wanna consider this next DIY. So we're gonna make some bookends. What you need to pick up at Dollar Tree are four of these wood plaques. I'm gonna start by using my miter saw to cut the larger one. So I'm just gonna cut off a little piece at the bottom, honestly where it starts to curve, because I want this piece to be as long as possible. Next, I'm going to take my second piece and I'm gonna cut that to where it's about one third of the way through. Honestly, I didn't do it super precise. So that's gonna give me three pieces. I have a large one, a medium one, and a smaller one. I'll repeat those steps, cutting two more pieces so that I can create two bookends. Then once I have have all my pieces cut down. I'll sand those pieces so there's no rough edges. And then I really wanted to keep that wood look. So I picked up three stain colors that I could do to create almost a natural, a medium, and a darker stain. So I have a natural color, a medium stain, and my darker one. And with the smaller piece, I'll stain that with the natural. I'll put it on with a foam brush and wipe off any excess with a paper towel. I'll do the same with the medium toned stain on the middle piece and then I'll add stain to the darker piece. Now that I have all my pieces stained, you wanna let this dry overnight so that all the stain is dry before you add in any glue. The next day, I'm gonna come in and add E6000 to the back of my smaller wood pieces, and I'll put those down, making sure the bottom of them are level so that they can sit up really nicely. And here's how they look with my books in my bedroom. A really big trend that I've been noticing is this rainbow wall art with spackling. I actually made one a few months back and it was really pretty. I did it with Dollar Tree supplies, but I've been seeing a lot of trays and I wanted to try to recreate one myself. So from Dollar Tree, I got a foam board. I'm also going to be using some spackling. Now I got it in a large tub from Lowe's, but you can get the smaller jars as well. I just knew that this project might take a little bit more and I'd have to buy several of those smaller tubes. I used a putty knife to put the spackling onto my board. 
one of the tools you're gonna need for this project is a trowel. So you wanna make sure you place your trowel on the edge because when you spread out your spackling, you need to make sure that it covers the area where your trowel is going to go or this project isn't gonna work very well. So once you figure out how far you need to move your spackling out, take your putty knife and spread it as evenly as possible across your foam board. Don't worry about getting to the edges because you're not going to have your tray go out that far. Once you have your putty completely spread out, then you're gonna go through with your trowel, creating just a slight wave across the board. When I did this one time, it wasn't as clean as I'd like it to be. So I actually puttied back over the area and did another pass. So if you don't like the way it turned out, just do it again until you're happy with it. Now, once you're happy with it, you wanna go along the edges with your putty knife, just kind of cleaning up that edge because later, once this dries, you're gonna come in and actually cut that area off. So it's easier just to do it ahead of time with your putty knife. And then that way you're not wasting any of your spackling. Once you're at this point, it's time to let it dry. So let it dry at at least overnight. Then you wanna come in with a nice sharp X-Acto knife and you're gonna cut along the edges. Now, hopefully you've created a nice edge when you remove that spackling, but you just wanna make it a nice clean edge. On both of your edges, you want them to be nice and straight. So figure out where you wanna cut it off and then just cut a piece off. After I did all the cutting, I wanted to paint it. So I'm gonna be painting it with the color Reden Point, And I'm just gonna mix that with a little bit of baking soda to give it a gritty texture. I'll put on one coat with my paintbrush. Once this dries, it's perfect as a tray. You can put it on your coffee table or in your dining room. This next item is going to be to hold your earrings. So what you're gonna need is a frame from Dollar Tree. You're also going to need the burlap that they sell at Dollar Tree. Now, if you can't find it there, you can usually find it at most craft stores. So remove all the contents from your frame. You're also going to use wire cutters to pull out the backing pieces on the back of the frame. Then the burlap, you may want to press or iron it just to get it as straight as possible. Now, this is such a simple DIY. What you're gonna do is you're gonna start on one edge and you're gonna put hot glue on the back and you're gonna place the burlap over top until it's dry. Cut off any excess. Then you're gonna pull your burlap as tight as possible and wrap it around the other side. Hot glue, hold that in place, cut off the excess. With your two sides, what you wanna do is move the fabric in a little bit, pull it up and hot glue it in place. Again, cut off the excess and repeat that on the other side. Now I'm gonna add this frame to a Dollar Tree easel that I actually DIY'd in a previous video. All I did was add some wood beads to the bottom of the easel and then I spray painted it with this pretty gold color. So with my burlap frame, I'm gonna put it on top and then you can add any of your earrings and I think this display is absolutely gorgeous. I love checking Pinterest for inspiration. And if you guys aren't following me, I'm over at Liz Fenwick Homemade on Pinterest. So you can follow me there. When I was on Pinterest, I saw this circle wall art. It had this really cool fabric texture. I wanted to try to recreate it. So at Dollar Tree in the plus section, they have these circle canvases for $3. I also picked up this set of pillowcases. So I'm just gonna be using one pillowcase and I'm going to add Mod Podge to the front of my canvas. I'm gonna wrap my pillowcase about halfway in between my circle canvas and hot glue it on the back. I'm also going to be adding Mod Podge to the pillowcase because I'm gonna be trying to scrunch this up and that Mod Podge is going to help to strengthen the pillowcase and hold it in place. So this next part, I started to kind of scrunch up the pillowcase after it had Mod Podge on it. And to hold it in place, I used some clothespins. This worked okay. I would probably still use the clothespins next time, but I did have to kind of keep scrunching it to get that look I was going for. 
Once I scrunched it up, I'm gonna flip it over to the back and cut off any excess pillowcase that I'm not gonna use. I'm going to continue to scrunch the fabric and then I'll hot glue it on the back. That hot glue is just going to start to hold my pillowcase in place. So you're gonna keep scrunching and gluing in place. The cool thing about this is it's whatever shape you want your pillowcase to be in. So just scrunch it up till you're happy with it and you wanna hot glue the edges so that it creates that nice circle shape all the way around. Now at this point, you may wanna add some some additional Mod Podge to the top just to make sure that as it's drying, it's gonna hold in place. I also put some Mod Podge on the side of my frame. Let this sit completely overnight because you want the Mod Podge to dry. And when you come in the next day, it's going to be completely set and ready to spray paint. Now from here, this is total personal preference. I kind of changed my mind as I was doing this. So I started with kind of a cream colored spray paint. And as I was doing it, I wanted it to look a little bit more white. And sometimes if you add Add in another spray paint before your spray paint dries, you get this really cool like mixed textured appearance. So that's exactly what I did. So I started with a cream color and then I added in ivory and the two colors mixed really well together. Now to give it even more texture, I came in with my stone spray paint on top of this. I didn't let any of it dry. I just sprayed it right on top and then let the whole thing dry before hanging it on my wall. And here's a look at how it turned out. I love the look of marble, and one of the last times I was shopping on Pottery Barn's website, I saw all this really pretty brown marble, and I'd never created anything with a brown marble appearance, so I thought this next DIY would be perfect to achieve that look. When I was in the Crafter's Square, I found this wood circle. I'm gonna pick that up, and what I wanna make is a tray. So for my circle, it has a couple of holes in the top where the hanger is. I'm gonna pull the hanger out and then just fill the holes with some wood filler. I'll spray paint the top with two coats of a white Rust-Oleum spray paint. Once that's completely dry, I wanted to do the marble look. So I had an idea of how I was gonna do this, but I wasn't sure exactly how it was gonna turn out. So you wanna elevate your piece. So I just put it on an old sample paint and set it down. So the first thing you wanna do is get the entire piece white. You could use paint, but I find whenever I'm doing like a solid color, it's a good idea to mix in a pouring medium. This pouring medium is from Hobby Lobby. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of that with some white pouring paint. And then I'm gonna put that all over the top of my wood circle. And then I'm gonna move the wood circle around to get the entire piece covered. The next thing I did was create that marble technique. And in my inspo picks, there was a lot of browns and black. So those are the colors I'm gonna be using. So for the brown paint, I really didn't have the color that I needed. So I picked a couple of browns that I had in my acrylics and mix those together until I got the brown color that would work perfectly for this. I'm also gonna be using the black pour paint from Dollar Tree. So on the top of my circle, I have white paint completely covering it, and I'm going to add on that brown and black paint. Now to create that marble look, I'm going to get a bamboo skewer and I'm just going to draw lines in the paint. This is where you're really drawing those marble textures. You're really trying to mimic the look of of the veins that you see in marble on your piece here. Now, honestly, I was a little surprised at how well this did turn out and how well I was able to achieve that. Now with this piece, you're gonna have to let it dry completely overnight because you're using so much paint and it's also going to drip off the edges. So make sure you keep it elevated. Now the next day I wanted to create a base to support this piece and you could use anything you had on hand. I actually had this glass vase sitting in my craft room. It was from the thrift store and I'm gonna wrap it with the wood laminate that you can buy in the Dollar Tree kitchen section. So I'm gonna wrap the wood contact paper around, cut so you have the pieces about two inches longer than your clear vase. You're gonna wrap it around removing any air bubbles and then you're going to tuck the laminate on both sides. You're gonna add E6000 to the bottom of your clear container and put your wood marble piece on top. And you can style this in your home with any decor.
This next DIY, we're gonna be using Quick Create again, but I have to tell you, it's absolutely one of my favorite DIYs in this video. We're gonna be making Quick Create candles. One of the things you wanna think about whenever you're making Quick Create items is how you're going to pop them out. So with silicone, that's a great option. So with something like candles, I like to use juice containers because they're paper and I can easily peel them off after it's set into the mold. So I'm gonna be using two different size juice containers. So I'm just going to rinse them out really well. Then I'm going to cut around the top portion because I'm not going to need that and it's gonna help me to fill them. I'm also gonna need some scrap wood from Dollar Tree. So I have these long wood pieces and I want one of the wood pieces to go about as high as my candle's gonna be. So I'm gonna cut down a piece and then cut down another piece the exact same size and I'll cut it with my hacksaw. Then I just need two other pieces that are a little bit shorter. Honestly, make them whatever size you want, but I wanted them to be a little bit different. I'm gonna add in the wood pieces to the corners. So I want both of the wood pieces to sit in there so that they touch on one of the corners, if that makes sense. And I'm gonna do that for both of the containers. Now it's time to mix up and add in my quick crete. So I'm gonna mix up the quick crete the same way. I'm gonna add in quick crete. I'm also gonna add in water until it's at a pudding consistency. Then I will put the quick crete into my containers, holding those wood pieces on the side because I don't want them to move around in my piece. And I'll add the quick crete till I get to the top of the wood piece. And I'll do that in both of the containers. I'm also going to add one of these larger tea lights that I picked up from Walmart. I'll put that in the top and I'm just gonna press it down until I can't see the metal portion around the edge. You wanna let this dry for at least five hours or overnight come back in and then you can start to peel off the container. I find that this is the easiest way to do it. Peel off the container until it completely pops out. I also, again, like to let this sit overnight because it's still a bit wet at this point. So you wanna let it set overnight. Once I peel off the container, now I wanna really expose those wood pieces and it's going to happen where some of that quick crete is going to get around the edges. So I used one of my scraper tools to scrape off any quick crete that's on the outside portion of my wood pieces. And this is a great thing to do before it really dries. So scrape that off. You could also sand down the wood pieces to make sure you can really see them. Then let your candles set overnight so they can harden before you use them. And then you can style them in your bathroom and here's a look at how mine turned out. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. Comment the word of the day, which is Dollar Tree. Whenever you're looking for craft supplies, do not just stay in the craft section at Dollar Tree. You can find craft supplies all over the store. One of my favorite places to look is over in the cleaning section. So when I was walking through there, I found this really interesting brush. At the time, I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I was for sure going to pick it up because I knew it would create a really cool paint technique. I wanted to try to create a large vase, and whenever you need a large vase, the best place to get it is at the thrift store. I found this really large, clear vase that would be perfect for my project. So I only wanted to paint the bottom third. So I used frog tape. I wrapped that around my vase. Now I wanted to make sure I didn't get paint on the top half of my vase. So to do that, I took some craft paper, wrapped that around, and then used frog tape to secure it in place. Once you have your craft paper wrapped around, you just wanna take it and push it down into the middle. That's gonna protect the center of your vase. I'm gonna flip the vase over just so it's a little bit easier to paint. Now it's time for my paint technique. So the paint I decided to use were the Dollar Tree Paint Pour paints. These are great for so many projects. I'm gonna be using a white, a cream, and a black. So I started by putting some white paint in a dish. I dipped my cleaning brush into the paint and then wiped off the excess on my table. Then I just dabbed it on the side of my container. This created a really cool speckled look and I did that all around my vase with the white color. Then I came in and did the exact same thing with a cream color, and then followed it up with a black color using the same brush for all of the paint techniques. 
Now, if you wanna add more white or more cream, you can definitely do that until you're happy with the look. But I felt like this was such a unique technique that I wouldn't have gotten with a normal paintbrush. Let this dry completely, then you're gonna remove the paper and the tape. You can fill it with your favorite stem. Dollar Tree is now carrying canvases in the color black for $3 in the Dollar Tree Plus section. When I picked mine up, I didn't know exactly what I was gonna do with it, but I knew I had to grab one. So I wanted to keep it the color black, but I felt like the best thing to do was add texture to it. So I started by putting spackling on the entire piece. I have this really large tub of spackling, but you can buy it in smaller containers at Dollar Tree. So I'll use my scraping tool and put it over the entire piece. Once I have it distributed over my entire piece, I'm gonna go in with a paper towel and I'm just going to press down on it. This gave me kind of an interesting texture. I had a rough look, but everything was kind of pressed down. I really liked the appearance of it. I wanted to create one line through the bottom of my canvas. So to do that, I'm gonna use a trowel tool. You can pick these up at Home Depot or Lowe's. They're for putting on mortar when you're laying tile. So they would be in the tile section. I'm gonna take the smaller end of the trowel. I'm gonna run it across the bottom of my canvas. I'll pull off any spackling that got on my tool and I'll do it one more time to make a really clean line. Now you need to let this dry completely overnight before you do anything else to it. The next day I came in and I'm gonna paint the entire piece with a black sample paint that I picked up. I had to do two coats on it just to make sure it was completely covered black. And here's how this piece turned out. Dollar Tree has done such a good job recently of giving us so many more wood crafting items. So I wanted to do a DIY with some of those wood crafts. So I picked up two of the wood blocks. A lot of times when you get them, they're very rough. So I started by sanding them just to get all the rough edges off. Next, I'm gonna use some wood beads. These wood beads are from Amazon, but they do have them at Dollar Tree as well. I'm gonna hot glue the wood beads along the base of one of my plaques. and then I'll add hot glue to the top of the wood beads and place the other plaque on the top. Now, originally I thought I wanted to put some legs on here. So I had these large wood beads from Amazon. I hot glued those on and I realized these are way too big. So I ended up pulling them off and putting on some smaller beads. The ones that I used on the inside, I used those for the legs. I also originally thought I was going to paint this, but when I looked at it, I thought, you know what? This would look great stained. So to stain this, I'm gonna be using the color Golden Oak, and I like to use a foam brush whenever I stain. I'm gonna place the stain with my foam brush onto the tray, and then any excess, I'll immediately pull off with a paper towel. Let that dry completely, and I think these are great to use in your bathroom or your kitchen to put your soap container on. If your Dollar Tree happens to have a Dollar Tree Plus section, you've probably already seen these $5 planters. They're really large, they're thick, they're gonna be perfect. And I saw this one, picked it up, and thought it'd be great for a DIY. Another item from Dollar Tree you're gonna need for this DIY is a trowel. You're also going to need some spackling. Now, this is something you can pick up at Dollar Tree. I actually have it in a large tub from Lowe's. I find that I use it for a lot of projects, so it's easier for me to get it in a larger tub. Now, what you're gonna do is you're going to start by getting some spackling out on the back side of your trowel. Then you're gonna take your trowel and press it onto the side of your planter, pulling it down to create the shape of a petal. You're gonna start at the top and do a layer all the way around. Now I did this on those natural lines that are formed in the shape of my planter. After I got all the way around, I came down and I did another layer in between the petals I had created. Now since this was on an area that was kind of at a point, I wasn't able to do a full petal. So I kind of had these smaller petals in between my larger petals, but I like the way 
that that looked. Every one or two times that you create a petal, you're going to need to get more spackling on the back of your knife so that they create a really consistent look. Now, after I did the second layer, I went down to my next layer and continued to add petals until I got to the bottom. Now, as you get to the bottom, you may have to flip your pot upside down and add additional petals. Now you wanna let this dry completely overnight when you're done. When I came back in the next day, I sanded it down a little bit with some sandpaper along the edges. That way, if you have any rough edges or anything that looks like joint compound, it's gonna be completely taken care of with this sandpaper. This is really easy to do, so just do it lightly all around the edges. Now, you can leave it natural. I decided I wanted to paint mine. On the outside, I used a beige texture spray. And then on the inside, I just sprayed it with a light beige color. I wasn't sure if you were going to be able to see this once I put in a plant, but I wanted to make sure that I covered that just because you could see some of that spackling along the top. So once I had everything spray painted, I let that dry and I styled it in my house with a plant that I had from Ikea. Have you guys seen this trend where people are putting moss on wall art? I've been wanting to do this trend now for a few months and finally did for this video. So I picked up a canvas from Dollar Tree. They have these $3 ones in the plus section. Now, most of my moss I bought at Dollar Tree. They have honestly like three or four different varieties. I bought all of the moss that they had for this canvas. I also picked up an additional bag of moss from Michaels. So to start this out, I wanted to create kind of a cascading pattern with the moss that I bought at Michaels because it had these raised circles and I thought that would be kind of cool. So that's what I started doing. So I just took the moss in the bag and hot glued it to my piece, trying to make sure that there was no white still showing through. Next to go along the edges, I wanted to section off different colored mosses. I used a Mod Podge and a foam brush and put the Mod Podge down all over my piece. Now I was a little concerned if the Mod Podge was gonna hold everything down. So in some areas I actually added in hot glue as well as my Mod Podge. I do feel like the Mod Podge probably would have been okay on its own. But then I just went through and I started creating. I used sections of one colored moss and then I would go in with another colored moss until I was happy with the way that it looked. So once I had the piece completely covered, I picked it up and leaned it against the wall so that I could really see where I had holes missing. So if there was a white piece, I used my hot glue and I added in more moss or more pieces. I also felt like on the edges I could add in more, so I added in more using hot glue to the edges. Once it was completely covered, I let it dry and then hung it up in my bedroom. For our next organization DIY, you're going to need to pick up one of these clear drawers from Dollar Tree as well as a set of curlers. So what you're going to do is pull out the drawer of the clear organizer. Then you're going to take one of your curlers and you're going to mark it with a Sharpie where you think it's going to fit snugly in the drawer. Then you use your scissors to cut the foam out and then I used my wire cutters to cut the little white wire that's inside of the curler. Place it into your drawer and make sure it fits. You're gonna do that with the rest of your curlers, making sure they all fit into the container. I'm gonna remove the white piece from the end of my curlers, and then I'm gonna use a black Sharpie to paint the edge of my curlers. Since this was a clear drawer, I knew you were going to be able to see it. I bought another roll of the burlap that I was using earlier, and I'm gonna use that for this DIY. Since burlap is a little see-through, you wanna fold it over twice, otherwise you're gonna see the pink curlers inside. So just fold it over twice, and I'm going to cut it down. I'll cut off the excess, 
Next, I'm going to hot glue one of my curlers along the edge. I'll cut both of the edges off as well so that it fits nice and snug. And I'll wrap it to where I think it's gonna completely cover my curler and then I'll hot glue it in place. Then I'm gonna check and make sure that my curler is going to fit into my clear container. I'm gonna repeat those steps with all of the curlers. When you add all of these into your container, this is going to be a perfect organizer to put all of your rings in. Every time I head to Dollar Tree, I find something new in the crafter's square. I found these wood sticks in a bag and I was like, these are so cool. Let's do something with them. So I think what I wanna do is create a tray. So I got one of my large craft sticks. You can pick these up at Walmart. So to create my tray, I'm gonna add hot glue to the front part of my craft stick. I'm gonna start by staggering the pieces on the top. They're just being attached with the hot glue. I'll continue down my craft stick, adding in hot glue and staggering my pieces until I get to the very end of the craft stick. Now to put on top of these, I found these new clear containers at Dollar Tree. These are great. I'm gonna add in some black rocks. I feel like black rocks have a great high-end look. So I'll put those in the bottom of my clear container. I'm gonna add in a candle I got in a four pack from Walmart and I'll place those on my tray. Here's a look at how those turned out. Did you know you can actually make a DIY sconce from materials you pick up at Dollar Tree? I've done this before on my channel. I'll kind of show you how that DIY turned out here. But when I was shopping at Dollar Tree, I came across these new canvases. I loved this one. I thought it was so pretty. And I thought, you know what? This would make a really cool sconce. So that's what we're gonna do today. So you're gonna need a few things from Dollar Tree. You're gonna need two of the napkin holders they sell. You're also going to need a placemat. Let's start with the placemat. Now the placemat kind of has this curved edge. So I started by creating a straight line on my placemat and cut that across so I had a nice straight edge. I'm gonna work on the canvas next. So I unwrapped it and I'm gonna start by removing all the staples on the back so I get a flat canvas piece. Now you're gonna take those two napkin holders and we need to attach them. So I had some black electrical tape. I'm gonna get three pieces of black electrical tape and I'll wrap the napkin holder together to secure them in place. Now we need to add our placemat to the front of our napkin holders. So you're gonna hot glue one side of the placemat to one side of your napkin holders. And then you're going to wrap it around adding additional hot glue and hot gluing the other side in place. If you have any excess placemat, just cut that off. Now, the bad part about my canvas was it's a little small. It didn't fit all the way to the sides of my placemat, but that's okay, I have a solution. With my canvas, I'm gonna cut off that black piece that's along the edges. and then I'm going to hot glue one side, wrap it around as tightly as possible, and hot glue the other side. Then I'm going to put hot glue around the top of the canvas and tuck that in on the top as well as the bottom. So I need something to cover the sides, so I'm gonna use that same black electrical tape and I'm gonna cut off two pieces and wrap it around the side. You could do the same technique with additional fabric. You could also use something like black ribbon and hot glue that on the sides, but I was just going to use the tape that I already had. Now we're gonna turn our attention to the back of this sconce. So you need something so you can attach it to the wall. So I took just a craft stick I had, cut it in half, and I'm going to hot glue that to the back of my napkin napkin holder because when I go to hang this on the wall, I can add command strips to the back. It'll hang directly on the wall. Now let's talk puck lights. I have two choices for you guys. One is a push puck light that also comes with a remote. You could also use a motion sensor light. I have some of these as well. So I'm going to link both options for you down in the description box. 
box with your puck light. You want to make sure it has the batteries in there. You're going to add hot glue to the bottom because I find the hot glue works a little bit better than the sticky pieces that come with it. I just prefer to use the hot glue. So I'm going to put hot glue on the bottom and then stick it onto my napkin holder. You'll attach this with command strips onto the wall. And here's how my sconce looks on my wall. Most years around this time at Dollar Tree, they have out these domes and I think they are so high end and they look great in our DIYs. So I picked up three of them. I also picked up some large candles. You can get these large candles at Walmart. So I'm gonna open up the domes and then on the black piece, I'm going to hot glue the candles to the center. I'm gonna add in some moss with hot glue around the edge of my candle. Since it had that silver base, I wanted to cover that up. So I added moss all around the edge. Then I'm going to put the dome back on. Now the way that I'm creating these, these are just gonna be decorative. So I'm not gonna be lighting these candles at all, but they're just decorative at this point. If you wanted to leave off all this next piece and make them so you could light them, you could definitely do that. So then I'm gonna be using a piece of bendable wood. Now I will link this down below. It's an Amazon find, but it's about one inch in thickness. And I use this in so many different crafts, but I'm going to cut off a piece that I can wrap all the way around to kind of create a handle on here. I'm not going to pick it up by this, but it looks like a handle. And I'm going to measure that piece out two times so that I can put it on all three of my domes. And then I'm going to hot glue one edge of the handle to one side on the black piece, wrap it around and hot glue it to the other side. Then I'm gonna cut off another piece that I'm gonna wrap around the black edge at the bottom, hot gluing it on what I consider to be the back side of my piece. I wanted to add another piece of wood about halfway up, so I'm gonna cut off a piece and again, hot glue that together on the back side. I'm gonna repeat all these steps on the other domes. And here's a look at how they turned out in a grouping of three. I saw this planter on a high-end site and absolutely loved the gray color and the texture, so I wanted to try to recreate it. I found this glass container at my local thrift store. I thought it was perfect as a planter size. Now, how am I gonna create the texture on it? One of my favorite things to use is Quickcrete. You can pick this up at Home Depot. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the Quickcrete and mix it with water. And you really want this to be a thin consistency. Honestly, I started putting it onto my planter before it was thin enough and it just kind of looked globby. So make it really thin. Then you're going to take a paper towel, dip it in your quick create, and you're going to start dabbing it all over your piece. Now you do not want to completely cover it. Honestly, you want to really just put it in certain areas so that you kind of get that hint of texture all around your base. Once you like the way it looks, you're gonna set it on something to dry overnight. The next day, you can come back in and paint it that dark gray color. I had a sample paint from when we were painting the outside of our house that was in this dark gray. That's what I'm gonna be using. I'll use a paintbrush to add it to the outside of my planter. Now you are going to need to do two coats, so let one of your coats dry and then do the next coat. And here's how it looks in my bedroom. You guys are gonna have to let me know if I've been using Quickcrete too much, but I absolutely love it and I think it's perfect to add to bathroom items. So I do have two Quickcrete projects in this video, but I promise you they're so good. So you're going to need to pick up some Quickcrete. Now I will tell you, buy it at Home Depot. I went to Lowe's, they didn't have it, so make sure you pick it up at Home Depot. And then you're also going to need a square silicone tray. Now if you wanna make these another shape, you could do that, but I went with the square silicone ones and I'll link them for you down below. You also need some hooks. Dollar Tree sells hooks. I have a really affordable set that I use in several of my bathroom makeovers. It's from Amazon. You get 12 in a pack. They're so affordable. I'll link it for you down below. I'm gonna use three disposable bowls, fill them up with Quickcrete, and then I'm gonna add in water. I'm gonna mix water in each of my bowls until the Quickcrete is at a thin pudding consistency. Honestly, the thinner it is, the easier it is to work with. 
Now this next part was kind of an experiment for me because I have never added paint to Quick Crate, but I wanted them to be different shades. So I kept one exactly the way it was. And then with the other two, I added in white paint to one and then I added in black paint to another. And I just mixed that in to give me a different color. I'm gonna pour in each of the three colors into my silicone mold. Then you're gonna kind of tap your silicone mold to make it nice and level. Take your hook and you're going to put it on top of your silicone mold. You're gonna cover the hook with some more of the quick crate. Now, as you're doing this, you're seeing that my hooks are kind of falling over. So I needed something to kind of hold them all in place. I put it on my spray paint turntable. I'll link it for you down below. And then I just added in different paints and a piece of wood just to kind of hold them up until it had a chance to dry. Now, the first one I did, it was not runny enough. So on the other ones that I put together, I added in a little bit more water just to make sure it laid nice and flat over the hooks. So do that for all three. Let it dry for at least a couple of hours. Quick Crete dries really quickly. And then after a couple of hours, you can pop them out of the molds. And then I also like to let them sit overnight to just really harden. The next day, you can add them as hooks in your bathroom with command strips. I think these look so amazing. Color blocking is a popular trend that I've been noticing in a lot of home decor, and you can see this trend really well on Anthropology's website. So I wanted to try to recreate this trend with Dollar Tree items. So at Dollar Tree, I found a collection of vases and bowls that I could use to intermix together. So I was removing all the labels from my bowls and vases, and I tried to figure out which vases and bowls would look the best together. So I figured out how I wanted to position them. Then then I picked three spray paint colors. I had a copper, a brown, and a tan, and I figured out, okay, if I have these two pieces together, I want to make sure I have two different colors on them. I determined what colors I was going to spray paint each of the items. And then to spray paint, what I like to do is take them outside and I'll do one coat on the back side. let that dry completely. Then I'll flip it over and do a, another coat on the side that I'm going to see. A total of two coats. And I did that with the cream color, the brown, and the copper. From there, they're really easy to put together after that. You're just going to use some E6000 and put the two containers together. I'm gonna to do that with all three of my vases. And I'll show you how they look styled in my living room. Several high-end sites have these wood sculptural pieces and they're really expensive. And I thought, let's try recreating that with some Dollar Tree items. So for this DIY, you're going to need wood cutouts. There's one that's in the $5 section and then there's also one that's $1.25. And then I also picked up two of these wood blocks. I also picked up a pack of these two hooks in the pegboard section. Now on my smaller wood piece, there's a hanger on there. I used my wire cutters to remove the staples from the hanger piece. Now on both of the wood pieces, I really liked that texture on the side. So I knew I was going to add paint to the center, but I didn't want to cover up that wood texture. So I started by wrapping frog tape all around the edges. I made sure I completely covered it. And I did that on both of my wood slices. So I had a plan for doing this paint technique, but to be honest, I didn't know exactly how it was going to turn out. So what I did was I got a low dish and I filled it with a cream colored sample paint that I already had. To that sample paint, I added in some white and black paint pour paints that you can buy at Dollar Tree. I just sprinkled those on and then I used a dowel rod to move the paint around. Next, I took my wood slice and I dipped it straight down into the paint and then I pulled it back up. 
Now, what I realized by doing this first technique is you really only get the base color paint when you do this. So this is a process where you're gonna have to dip it in twice. So I started by having that cream color on for the first layer. So then when I dipped it in the second time, I added in more white and black paint and swirled it around. And the second time I dipped it in, that's when I really picked up those colors of the white and black. So press it down and pull it straight back up. Now this just created such a cool texture on this piece and I let it dry completely overnight. I did the exact same thing with my other wood slice. I set it in once to get that base cream color. Then I added in some more white and black and swirled that around with my stick, put it in again and pulled it straight up. So while this was drying, with my wood blocks, I stained these to make them kind of a medium wood. To stain the wood blocks, I'm gonna use a foam brush to wipe on the stain and pull off any excess with a paper towel. I'm also gonna take those rings that I bought and I'm gonna spray both sides of those with a matte black spray paint. So the next day I removed the painter's tape from the edges of my wood. Now some of the paint had kind of gotten under the edges, so I used one of my scraping tools to scrape off any excess paint. Now with those rings that I had, those are gonna be kind of like the stable bases for both of my wood slices. So I added some E6000 to the bottom part and I also added some to the back and I'm gonna place my wood slices in those rings. And then I flipped them upside down. I made sure there was a lot of E6000 on the back and I let that dry for several hours. Now with my wood blocks, I needed a supporting piece to the back of that, so I used a craft stick. These are craft sticks you can pick up from Walmart. These are really great to have because I feel like I use them in so many different projects. I'm gonna hot glue my craft stick to the bottom of my wood block, and then after the rings had a chance to dry with the glue on there, I'm going to set them up. I'm gonna add hot glue to the top of my craft stick, and then I'm gonna place my wood slice so it's kind of leaning against that back craft stick, but it's supported by that bottom ring. And then let that dry completely. Do that with both of your wood slices. And then I don't know about you, but I absolutely love the way these turned out. And I feel like this is an inexpensive way that you can have those high-end sculptural pieces. I was excited to see that Dollar Tree is carrying these three tiered glass candle holders. A lot of times their candle holders are all the same level, so I love the difference in the heights. And there's so many things you could do with these. And then I also bought three tea lights. With the three candle holders and the tea lights, I'm gonna spray those with a green sea glass spray paint. It's going to give kind of an iridescent look. Once that dries, I'm gonna add E6000 to the top of my candle holders and put the tea lights on top of each of my candle holders. I'll let that dry overnight. And then the next day, I had some caning that I had left over from another project. I'm gonna use that to wrap around where the two candle holders meet. So I'm gonna cut off a section of my caning. I'll cut it off so I only have about an inch of overlap. I'll hot glue one of the sides down, wrap it around, and hot glue the other side down. And I'll repeat this step with my other two candle holders. And here's how they look in a grouping. Every time I'm shopping, no matter what section I'm in, I'm always thinking of ways that I can DIY and create things inexpensively. So when I was at Ikea, I found these placemats and I thought these are so cool. I love the texture and they would make great wall art pieces. So I bought two of them. I wanted to add a little bit to them. So I went in my craft room and I found some green macrame that I already had. And I'm gonna start by wrapping that around one of my pieces. So I'll wrap it around probably about seven Seven or eight times and I'll hot glue it to the back. Make sure you don't put any hot glue on the front. And then I'm gonna create another section where I wrap the green around again. Wrap it around seven or eight times, hot glue it in the back.
I'm gonna start with one piece of cream macrame and I'm going to wrap it over the bottom green piece and over the top of my top green piece. I'll come back down and put it underneath the bottom green piece. And I'm gonna repeat those steps two more times. I'll move the pieces of cream macrame around so that they're right next to each other. And then I'm going to hot glue the cream macrame on the back. I'm gonna repeat all of these same steps with my second piece of wall art, but I'm just going to move the green pieces down just a little bit. You can hang this wall art up with command strips or with a nail on your wall. Dollar Tree has recently come out with some new wallpaper colors, and I feel like these are great for updating any old vase you may have around your house. I had this clear vase from Dollar Tree that I was going to wrap it with. I'll wrap the wallpaper around and cut off any excess. And then I'm gonna peel off the backing. I'll place it around the vase, getting out any air bubbles. and I'll tuck the edges in. And you can fill this with your favorite florals. I have been loving the terracotta color. Honestly, I can't get enough of it. For our next DIY, I'm gonna use a plastic planter base and a succulent bowl. On the planter base, I'm just going to cut along the edge. It has a little lip that goes over the edge. I don't want that part, so I'm gonna cut that off. I'm gonna spray paint both pieces with a terracotta color doing two coats. Once everything has a chance to dry, I want to paint the inside of my bowl with a black color. So I'm gonna mix some black paint with baking soda. The baking soda is just going to give it more of a gritty appearance and you can usually get it done in just one coat. So I'm gonna paint the inside of the bowl, let that completely dry. After I'm done with the black paint, I put E6000 on the plant base and then I'm gonna put the bowl on top. I'll add in some succulents from Dollar Tree and here's how it turned out. I'm a big fan of these Dollar Tree wood shelves that they have out, but not so much a fan of the strings that come with it. So we're gonna use the shelf part to start our DIY. So I'm gonna stain both of these shelves with the color golden oak. Now when I stain, I use a foam brush and wipe it onto the wood. To remove the excess, I just use a paper towel to pull it off. I'm gonna let it dry completely, then I'm gonna add this eucalyptus sticker that I found at Dollar Tree. I'm pretty sure this is new. You guys will have to let me know down in the comments if you think this is new or not. And I'm gonna add that to one of the edges of my shelf. I'll cut off the excess because it was a little bit longer than my shelf, and I'll repeat this step on my second shelf. Now where I put the stickers, I covered up the holes on my shelf. So I just used one of my Cricut tools to create those holes again. Now, since I didn't like the string that came with it, I had some green macrame cord on hand. So I'm going to push that through each of the holes, making the strings longer than what I normally do. I'm always afraid of cutting them too small. And so I just feel like, you know what? I make them a little bit longer so I can tie them together at the end. Once I push them through the hole, I'm going to tie the bottom in a knot and then I'll cut it off so it hangs off about an inch. And I'll do that on all four sides. Mm -hmm. 
once I have it in place, you want to set your shelf down on a table so it's nice and level. Then you're gonna pull all four of your strings up and then you'll tie them in place. The keeping it level is really important because if you do this and it's kind of hanging in place, it's not gonna be level. You could even put a level on it if you want, but I think that just having it on a flat surface really helps. That way when you hang it up, you'll be able to put items on it. So I hung these two shelves together and styled them with some candles and here's how they turned out. For this next DIY, I wanted to cover a box that I had picked up from the thrift store. So I started by removing the front piece and the back hinges with a small screwdriver. For the base of my box, I'm gonna be using the wood contact paper that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna measure it around to make sure I have enough to cover my box and then I'll cut it off. Then I'm going to cut it down so it's about two inches higher than my box. I'll remove the backing and I'm gonna start on the back corner placing it down and then I'll smooth it all around the box until I get it all the way covered and then if there's a little bit of excess maybe two or three inches I'll just continue that onto the back then I realized I need to cut it down a little bit because I only wanted to fold it over about one and a half to two inches so I'm going to cut it down just a little bit I will adhere the rest of the laminate to the inside of my box Now I'm gonna turn my attention to the top of the box using a Dollar Tree canvas. Using my wire cutters, I'll pull out the staples in the back of the canvas. Then I'm going to wrap it around the top of my box. I'm gonna hot glue the two long sides. Then with the shorter sides, I'm gonna tuck in the edges and hot glue that in place. I'm gonna poke holes in the front of the canvas on the front side so that I can place my handle back in. And then I'll do the same on the back side and add back in the hinges that I had on before. And here's a look at how my covered box turned out. So one of my favorite things to do is find just odd things at Dollar Tree that I would probably never buy and turn them into fun decor pieces. So that's what I'm gonna do with this hello sign. So when I saw this sign, I thought this would make a really cool sculptural piece. So I'm gonna start by using my wire cutters to bend out the wires on this hello sign to make them as straight as possible. Once I got them as straight as I could, now I'm gonna try to bend them up so they almost make kind of like a horseshoe shape. And then when I get to the top, I'm gonna cut them off so they're as even as possible. Now you may already have one of these beaded wreaths on hand. I know they were really popular a month or two ago. They come in a couple different finishes. The one I'm gonna be using is the one that's in like the medium tone finish. And I'm gonna start by using my wire cutters to cut through the wreath because I wanted to use the beads that were already on there. Then I'm just going to simply take the beads off and loop them onto my horseshoe ring figurine. Once I got it completely covered, when I got to the last one at the top on either side, I added in hot glue to secure the beads in place. And here's a look at how this piece turned out in my decor. I absolutely love the acrylic organizers that they sell at Dollar Tree for $1.25, but I wanted to add some paint to them so that they fit in better with my decor that I had just created. So I'm gonna add painter's tape around the middle, and my plan is to paint the bottom. I 
I want it to be black, but when I'm painting something like plastic or acrylic, I find that it helps to add in an element like baking soda. That's gonna give that paint a grip texture and it's just gonna hold in place so much better. And you typically have to do less coats when you're painting. So I mix the black paint with a little bit of baking soda, and then I'm gonna do one coat along the bottom of both of my containers, and then I'll let that dry. I did a second coat. Once that was completely dry, I removed the painter's tape. I added these containers in my bathroom with makeup brushes, but really you could add anything you wanna organize in your bathroom to these containers. Mirrors typically provide a really high-end look, but you don't always have to keep them as mirrors. You can turn them into wall art, and that's what I'm gonna do with this DIY. So you're gonna need three circle mirrors from Dollar Tree. You're gonna disassemble the mirrors. Next, I'm going to add in some washi tape. You can get this anywhere. The one I bought is off of Amazon. I'll link it for you down below. And I'm gonna cut my washi tape off and I'm gonna put it in some different geometric patterns. I really didn't have any rhyme or reason to this. I just wanted each of the three mirrors to look a little bit different. Next, spray paint your mirrors with a frosted spray paint. This works so well and you only need one coat. I'm gonna do one coat on top of all of my mirrors. Now with my frames, I'm going to spray those. Pick your favorite color, I'm gonna go with blue. And you wanna do two coats of spray paint on your frames. Once everything has a chance to dry, remove your washi tape and you're gonna see the really cool pattern underneath. Then I'm going to reassemble my frames by adding the mirror with hot glue to the backing piece. Then I'll place it into my frame and then I'll add a little bit of hot glue on the back to secure it. You can hang these on your wall with command strips. Picture frames can be really pricey and they're really also easy to recreate with Dollar Tree items. On one of my recent Dollar Tree shopping trips, I found these wood pieces that I thought would make perfect frames. They were in the crafter square, so I picked up two of them. So I really liked the look of the lighter wood, but I felt like the darker wood could use a little bit of help. So I used one of my medium stains on the outside of the frame. I also used that on the inside where the inside of the frame was a darker wood. And to add the stain, I simply used a paper towel to wipe it on, and then I wiped off any excess with a clean paper towel. I received a message from a follower, Little Pink Pickup, on Instagram with an amazing idea. I don't know how I didn't think of this. She said, if you ever want an inexpensive leather handle, go to the thrift store and buy a belt. It's so much more affordable. And I was like, that's a genius idea. So that's exactly what I did. I went to the thrift store and I found a belt for $3. I'm gonna use this belt to create handles for my picture frames. So I cut off the buckle. Then I divided the belt in half and then I cut it down the middle. Then I'm going to shape the belt at the top so it creates a handle and I'll hot glue it to the back. I'm gonna repeat that step on my other frame, making sure that they're about the same height. I wanted some frames for a recent trip I took to Chicago, so I just printed off pictures from our trip. They're five by sevens and I printed them in black and white. I'll add E6000 to the four corners of my frame and I'll place them in the center. And here's how they look hung up together. One of the 
things I really struggle with, you guys, is air dry clay. I have tried so many different ones from like the Model Magic. I've bought some off of Amazon. I've bought some at Dollar Tree. And no matter what I do, they all seem to crack. So I would really appreciate your guys' recommendations in the comments for any clay that works well for you. Now, I'm gonna show you how I salvage this next project, but again, I had the cracks. So you're going to need a container of air dry clay. I'm gonna cut off a small piece and I'm going to roll it out with my rolling pin. Now maybe my problem is that I make them too thin. So maybe that's something I need to make them just a little bit thicker. Now for this project, I'm gonna use some Dollar Tree florals and I'm going to press them into my clay. After I press them in, you wanna make sure that they go in far enough so you can really see the texture in those florals. I'm gonna roll the edges to create an organic look around the edge. Now, once it completely dried, I did have some cracks. So to fix what I had, I went back in with a little bit of air dry clay on the back side and just placed it along the edge and let that dry. And I felt like that did kind of save my project. Let me know if you guys have any recommendations for those clays. And then I wanted to add a little bit of paint to bring out the detail in the tray. So I'm gonna use my gold rub and buff. I'll link that for you down in the description box as well. But I used the rub and buff and a foam brush and just brushed that along where I had created that stamp texture and then I also added the rub and buff to the edges and this just creates a beautiful tray I think these are great to put out in your kitchen or in your bathroom for jewelry or accessories Have you ever wondered what to do with those Dollar Tree vases that they have pretty much all year round in the floral section? Well, here's an idea to make a really cool vase. So start with one of those clear vases and remove the labels. You're gonna spray paint the vase with the color nutmeg, and this gives a really cool matte brown look. Next, we're gonna add a fun paint technique. So you're going to need a flat paintbrush. With my paintbrush, I wanted to create some notches. So I just went in with my pair of scissors and I'm gonna start cutting out notches on this paintbrush. This is gonna create a feathered look for your paintbrush. Next, grab any white or cream paint. I went with like a cream paint that I had in a sample paint color, and you don't want your brush to be covered very much with paint. So put a little bit of paint on there and actually wipe some of it off so there's just very little. I'm gonna start by creating diagonal strokes of my paint. Now, again, you don't want this to be too heavy, so go in lighter. You can always come back in with more paint. And I'm gonna to continue to create diagonal lines around my base. Then I came back in and put some horizontal lines, but really you could do anything with this. I just think it's a really fun textured feathered look. Let that dry and add in some of your favorite florals. Dollar Tree has these new hanging florals out that are so cool. I hope you guys can find them this spring, but I'm gonna show you how they look styled in this face. Concrete and cement is such a high-end look, and it's one of those things you could really recreate and have that look for less. So for this next DIY, you want to get some quick crete. You can buy this at Lowe's or Home Depot. You're also going to need some silicone muffin tins. Really, you can buy these everywhere. I'll link to the ones I got down below. Start by putting your quick crete into a disposable bowl, and then you're going to add in water. Now, I don't ever measure this, but you want your quick crete to be at kind of a pudding consistency. So where it pours in nicely. So just add water until you're at that consistency. Next, you're going to fill up your silicone containers till they're about maybe three fourths of the way full. Then you're going to add in tea lights into your silicone trays. Fill up two more of the silicone trays with quick crease, leaving those without a tea light in them. Now I'm also going to be using a smaller silicone tray and I'm gonna fill that up the same way with my quick crease. If you need more, just mix it up. And then I'm gonna put those in the smaller containers about three fourths of the way up and then put in my tea lights in half of them. You wanna leave three of them that do not have the tea lights inside. Let everything sit and dry for about three hours. Then you can pop them out of the molds. And then what I did was let them continue to dry overnight. 
The next day I came back in and now I'm going to glue them together. So the glue I'm gonna be using is E6000 and I'm going to flip one of the ones without a tea light over. I'm gonna add E6000 to the back. I'll put one of the cement molds with the tea light on top of the E6000. Now I did have a little bit of trouble with these kind of sliding off. So you may have to put some support pieces on the edge while these dry. Let them dry for a few more hours and then you have decorative candles that you can set out in your decor using the cement and they look really high end. Dollar Tree has some really great clear acrylic containers and I have this acrylic organizer with drawers in my bathroom that I spent a lot of money on several years ago. So I wanted to create one with Dollar Tree items. What you're gonna need for this DIY is six of the clear acrylic drawers. We're gonna create a makeup or jewelry organizer. So what you're gonna do is remove any of the tags on the front, then we're going to line them up. To attach them together, you wanna use E6000 because this creates a really strong bond. And we're going to put the majority of our E6000 on the sides of our containers. You can put a little bit on the top, but you don't want it to show through since it is clear. Let this dry completely overnight, and then you can put in items that you need to store in your room. Have you been to the Dollar Tree Plus section? They have a lot of fun decor items, one being this wood tray for $5. So I grabbed that at my local Dollar Tree. I'm gonna start by doing a deep stain color on this tray. Now, when I do that, I use a foam brush and I paint it all around the edges. And then with the excess, I'll just pull it off with a paper towel immediately after I put it on. If you want your stain to be a little bit of a deeper color, just leave it on longer before wiping it off. I wanted to add an inside tile portion and Dollar Tree carries these peel and stick tiles. And I've had them now for a while and I thought this would be the perfect project for these tiles. Right now, blue and white ceramic decor is a really popular trend in high-end stores. So I'm gonna bring some of that blue and white trend with these tiles. So I'm gonna use a piece of cream craft paper and I'm gonna use it inside my tray to create a template. And I just press it down along the edges. Then I'm gonna cut out my template. Then I'm gonna pull out two of those tiles from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna cut one of them down to size. I'm gonna cut down another tile and line it up to match with my first tile. And then I'm gonna use some hot glue to hold them in place. And here's a look at how my tray turned out. I've been trying to introduce my girls to all of some of my favorite movies from when I was a kid. So the other night we were watching Princess Diaries and there's a scene in the movie where Mia and her mom are doing this balloon art on canvas and it looks so much fun. So I had this idea, what if we try to recreate that and actually see how easy it is to do? So I don't know if anyone's ever gonna wanna try this DIY, but it's gonna be really entertaining to watch me try. So let's talk supplies. First, I changed into something that I'm okay getting paint on because I don't know how much paint's gonna go everywhere. I also picked up black poster board. That's what we're gonna use as our base. You could also use canvas if you wanted. And then for the paints, I wasn't sure if I should use regular acrylics, but I grabbed my paint pour paints. These are from Dollar Tree. The other thing that you need to pick up are some balloons, some funnels. I got all of these different colorful ones off of Amazon. I also picked up some darts off of Amazon. This will be interesting. And then my balloon pump. I use this with so many different projects. Again, it's off of Amazon. I'll link it for you. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is try to fill up our balloons with the paint. So I think this is gonna be the trickiest part. If we can get this down, we should be good to go. I've been testing out how to fill up the balloons and I think I have the strategy down. So you're gonna take your balloon and put the funnel inside. Then you're gonna go in with your paint pour paint and you're gonna do maybe like two squirts. 
You're gonna let the paint run down into your funnel. Then you're going to pull the funnel off. And this is the part that could be really messy. So if you have a hand pump, I think it would be less messy, but I've determined with my electric one, I'm just going to turn it this way and then press down to fill it up just a little bit. Okay. And to be honest, the less time it's on the pump, the better, because that's less time the paint can splatter everywhere. Then the part that's a little bit messy is tying it. You can see I have paint all over my hands, but you're simply just going to tie your balloon. So if you do this, I would do it outside or make sure you have a drop cloth down. And then you just wanna make, I don't know, we'll probably make about 10 more of these. We got all of our balloons filled up for our poster boards. Now it's time to attach them. So I'm gonna be using some of my push pins that I use for sewing, and I'm just gonna put them all over the board before we take them outside to try to break them. So with these top ones, I put them really high at the top, so I'm hoping that they kind of hang down. That way I get paint all the way to the top of my piece. So I have all the balloons on this one canvas. Now my theory is if I put them sort of at the top, the paint will run down after they open. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but that's kind of my theory. So I'm gonna do the same thing with my other poster board. Now we're finally at the fun part. We're gonna take these outside and see if we can pop them with our darts. All right, we're outside, so let's get to popping. I think I should start with the larger balloons first. The real challenge is going to be how long it takes us to hit them. Okay, that was uh, one. Oh. Same spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was close. So that didn't work, so I'm just going to try to throw a bunch at once and we'll see how that goes. <gasps> we did it! <laughs> I popped one! Yes! <laughs> That actually looks really cool. That took me, I don't know, maybe 20 darts to get our first one. We got 20 more balloons to go. That was so much fun to do. I'm pretty sure I have paint splatter all over me. So now I'm just going to remove the excess balloons and then we'll let them dry. I feel like this look is totally different than anything else I've done. I love the paint splatter look. It's just so fun. And here's a look at the balloon art styled in my bedroom. I was so excited to find these next containers at Dollar Tree. I think they're brand new and they would be perfect in your bathroom. You could use them as the clear acrylic containers in your bathroom, but I'm gonna do a slight paint technique on these containers. For my project, I'm gonna use three sample paints in a white, a gray, and a black. Now I wanted all three of my colors to be on my container. And when you're doing this, it's usually best to start with your lightest color and work your way up to your darker colors. So I started by putting two colors coats of the white colored paint onto my vases. I wanted this to look kind of like a gradual swooping technique. You'll see as we go along. So once the white was dried, I came back in with the gray color and added that. I'm also adding these colors to the lids sporadically, but I really didn't know exactly how I wanted the lid to look until I got all the colors on. Now this will take a little bit of time because you have to allow dry time, plus you're doing a second coat. And then my final color I'm gonna add is the black, and I'll add the black to both of my containers as well as the lid. This wasn't hard to do at all. I just used an easy swirl shape and you could put these in your bathroom as well.
I'm always on the lookout for interesting art. And when I saw this next item at the thrift store, I think I came across someone's already existing DIY. They essentially put a foam ball and then hot glued corks all around the edge. And I thought it was pretty cool. I didn't necessarily like the color of it and it was kind of falling apart. So I had to hot glue it back together. I thought, what if I spray paint this with a couple of coats of a matte black spray paint? Once I did that, I thought it looked really great. You'll have to let me know what you think of this in my decor. Another site that I love to look on is McGee & Co. And when I was looking on there, I found this marble doorstop, but the price on it was so expensive. But as I was looking at it, I thought, you know what? That reminds me of those bells that they have out in the shore living section. So I thought, let's try to recreate this. So using that bell, I'm gonna use that as the base of my DIY. Now the top of it has this nautical rope piece, and I'm gonna tape that off with some frog tape because I want that to stay in place when I'm done with my project. Next, to give it some weight, I decided I should put some quick crete in the center of the bell. So I mixed quick crete with water, and then I'm going to put that on the inside. Now with quick crete, you wanna let this set up overnight. That's exactly what I let it do. And then the next day I came back and it was time to paint. So I sprayed the outside with two coats of a white spray paint. Next, I'm gonna show you how I do my marbling technique. Now, if you've been on my channel, you've seen me do this before. What you wanna do is get a container or a bowl of water. Next, you need a spray paint called sea glass spray paint. And if you want it to look marble, I suggest getting the one in gray. I'll link it for you down in the description box. What you're gonna do is you're gonna spray that paint on the top of your water in different bursts. Then you're going to take whatever item you wanna marble. In our case, I have my white doorstop and you're going to dip it in into the water. Wear gloves while you're doing this so you don't get paint all over your hands. And then pull it up, then you're going to turn the piece and dip it in again, pull it up. Now the cool thing about this is if you feel like you need more paint, you can always add it to the top of the water and continue to dip your piece in until you feel like it has that marble appearance. You can see on this piece that this technique definitely gives it that marble appearance. Let it dry completely, then you're going to remove your painter's tape from your nautical rope. And here's how my doorstop turned out. Let me know what you think. Should we have gone with the high-end version or the Dollar Tree one?